Five unsettling scenarios involving alien life. There is no way to fully understand the cosmos because it is so vast and unbounded. It never ceases to amaze us and is full with gorgeous locations. There may or may not be anything frightful beyond of this beauty, though. Aliens have consistently been a popular in sci-fi films and books. This movie will discuss five uncomfortable and alarming alien theories that could alter the way you perceive the cosmos. Number 5. We are the only creatures in the cosmos. We are either alone in this universe or we are not, and both of these concepts are equally frightening, stated Arthur C. Clarke. The prospect that we might genuinely be alone in the universe is the one topic we don't discuss too much. Our universe has billions of galaxies, each with 200 billion stars, the vast majority of which are potentially habitable, thus the chances are stacked against us. The most prevalent stars in our cosmos are ones similar to our sun. Additionally, this just applies to the observable universe, there may be other universes beyond it. We probably aren't alone, so. This leads to a reality that is very dissimilar from what we currently perceive. The Copernican principle would thus be broken, making Earth the most significant and privileged place in the universe. If this were the case, we would represent the highest form of life in the cosmos and, in fact, the universe's attempt to perceive and comprehend itself. This is not the same as being one of numerous opportunities for extraterrestrial civilization. In a universe where singularities are despised, this would be the height of uniqueness. Since asteroids are not singular entities but rather a population, there is always need for more examples in science. The same is true of civilizations. The idea of just one really strange believability to the point where one automatically wonders if it was intentional at the time, regardless of how rare or prevalent they are. Number 4. We exist in a mechanical universe. Since thousands of years ago, our species has been evolving. 20,000 years ago, a human was very different from today in many ways. And it's not just our technology that sets us apart, it's also our shared ideas, which have transformed how we think and act in comparison to a time when any of it existed. Examples of these beliefs include education, reading, and other things. But what sticks out the most is the technology we have now. Who would have thought that the human species would become dependent on a cell phone, an artificial brain? What was once a way of communication over wires is now a wealth of information at your fingertips, a quick connection through numerous channels, and entertainment. And it appears that this pattern will persist. Medical research will put more and more of its attention over the coming years on how to integrate technology into the human body directly. In addition to being able to develop artificial organs, brain-machine interfaces like Neuralink and even better variations of them will be available. Or how about weight loss through nanotechnology, which requires no effort on the part of the user and simply melts the weight away. For individuals who require them, artificial limbs are currently available. We might reach a point in the future where we progressively transform into machines ourselves, neuron by neuron, over time. Imagine having a biological birth and then dying as a machine. However, only if death does actually happen in machines. In that universe, anything that may be damaged can be fixed, revived, or have backup copies made for a sort of endless existence. Even though you're no longer here, everything that made you who you are, including your memories, is still available for access at any moment, albeit some data may have been lost. In the present, scientists are already experimenting with digital immortality. As a result, we enter a world where artificial intelligence emerges as natural intelligence develops. Machine civilizations may far outnumber biological civilizations if this is the natural order of things. Those machine civilizations may eventually produce improved versions of themselves, suggesting that machines are descended from machines and that evolution appears in a new, controlled form under the garb of developing technology. What if we discovered a society without any evidence of that, rather its lineage appears to have been machines all the way down? 
All of this would indicate an initial biological civilization sparking the entire thing, but what if we uncovered a society without any evidence of that? Number 3. Dangerous viruses have the power to obliterate all human life on Earth. Well, this subject has been the focus of numerous science fiction films and books, and an entire scientific field called astrovirology is devoted to it. With the evolution of viruses came life on Earth. From viruses have been since the dawn of time, it is reasonable to assume that this is the way things are. Everywhere there is life, viruses exist. On the other hand, Earth's viruses are highly specialized, and they must not only attack cells, but the right kind of cells in the right chemical environment. While some viruses on Earth have the ability to switch species, this only occurs under very particular conditions. A crocodile is unlikely to get sick if you sneeze on it. The question of whether viruses may generalize under the correct circumstances is up for debate, though. It has been suggested that on a dying planet, like Mars at the time it started drying up, members of the microbial ecosystem would have been adapting or becoming extinct on a large scale during that period if it had life. However, the majority of scientists do not consider this to be the case. It's possible that as a result, the viruses that preyed on them evolved into more generic forms that could attack any cell they came across. This increases the likelihood that returning explorers may infect Earth with a virus that will eradicate the majority, if not all, of the planet's life. This opens the door for dead worlds to become infected with viruses that can assault explorers and obstruct any attempt at colonization. Despite the fact that planets are constantly being struck by meteorites from other planets, this terrifying scenario is still relatively likely. If this were the case, we would observe it in Mars meteorites, but we do not, and we most likely would not be alive today. But what if we haven't done enough exploring? What if it exists on another planet? What if we were only fortunate? Number 2. Life was introduced to Earth by aliens. The Earth's life has mysterious origins. It is unclear how a chemical reaction that is not alive may evolve into life. It is possible that we will one day understand this process and, consequently, be able to determine whether it is a common occurrence that must occur everywhere in the cosmos or a highly unusual confluence of events that can only happen very infrequently. However, it has been suggested that some process must disseminate life throughout the universe because it is such an uncommon event. This process, known as interstellar panspermia, allows rocks to carry latent life for thousands of years of journey before dispersing it wherever they happen to land. It seems unlikely that life could endure long enough to migrate across the cosmic system. The possibility exists, nevertheless, if it is artificially preserved and protected by an extraterrestrial civilization. There are two possible outcomes for this, purposely or accidentally. The unintended strategy would be if a culture from another planet accidentally infected early Earth with their germs, which are now our microbes, during a visit. While traveling through and exploring a fascinating planet that might have life evolving on it, they may have unintentionally introduced life that would later develop into a civilization that appreciates cell phones and donuts. The second option is that they did it on purpose because they believed there was some urgency or value to spreading life wherever it may find a footing. This is more like to gardening, where you can grow beans where none previously existed. Up order for intelligence to fill the cosmos, they may plant the seed and periodically check in on it until it matures into a civilization and they make suitable contact. They can also have been extinct for such a long time that their legacy is the life they leave behind. This prompts SETI to make an unorthodox decision. Every species on Earth may have had a message stored in its DNA by a civilization of this caliber. It is challenging, but not impossible, to locate such an artificial identifier inside DNA. Finding such an aberrant identification inside DNA is challenging, but it is conceivable since DNA is an incredibly complex and extensive data storage system. Perhaps we have always contained the evidence of life beyond. Number 1. The Alien Simulation Scenario 
The question of whether we are in a simulation or a genuine world has long been a problem for philosophy. Movies like Matrix beautifully illustrate this. The concept of ancestor simulation is the most well-known use of this, which has recently gained attention in the context of simulation theory. In this stage, a civilization creates a simulation of its own history, possibly to learn more about the nature of the cosmos in the distant past. Maybe they wanted to experience being fully human once more, or maybe they wanted to try to piece together the pieces of their own past that were missing. Some theories even imply that the universe is essentially a simulation of this kind, but I think that's pushing it a little bit. There is, however, one unsettling feature of the simulation theory idea. If such a society is permitted to develop, it will not only produce the in-question civilization, but also additional civilizations as a result. One relevant civilization would exist along with a plethora of unnecessary ones that the simulators would not be aware of but could conceivably develop. Maybe this is how they investigate alien civilizations. This may also help to explain the eerie silence, as the simulators only develop one civilization and for ethical reasons, no other civilizations are allowed to exist. However, if that's not the case and civilizations can develop on multiple planets, as the seeming size of the cosmos would imply, we might be an unintended consequence existing in the ancestor simulation of an extraterrestrial civilization. The future will determine whether or not these hypotheses are true. However, they are all as compelling. What are your thoughts on these uncomfortable possibilities, guys? Which one do you find to be the most persuasive? Comment below with your thoughts and let us know what you think. Additionally, be sure to like our video and subscribe to our channel as doing so motivates us to continue producing fantastic films for you.